Can we feel a human connection with other people while we're standing bravely in our own truth? That's what we're going to talk about today. The real man smiles in trouble, gathers strength from distress, and grows brave by reflection. Thomas Paine. Today we're going to continue our conversation about the book, Braving the Wilderness, The Quest for True Belonging, and The Courage to Stand Alone by Brene Brown. I've always wanted to read a book by Brene Brown, and I'm glad I finally did. And it doesn't have anything to do with wilderness. I was really hoping that it did because I love the wilderness. But the idea of this whole book starts with the fact she couldn't understand this whole sense that she just never felt like she truly belonged. She didn't have success belonging in school. Her parents, she said, were ill-equipped to help her understand this belonging with other people. And she's one of these people that will take something that she doesn't understand, like a quote or a concept, and she will just dig at it until she finally gets it. She finally understood something when her husband told her, I know it's hard and you must feel alone. You're kind of weird and an outlier in a lot of ways. But here's the thing. There were more than 20 speakers at the big leadership conference, and you were the highest rated speaker in your jeans and clogs. Given that, how do you figure that anyone belongs up there more than you? You will always belong anywhere you show up as yourself and talk about yourself and your work in a real way. That quote from her husband turned her life around. She finally understood what it meant to belong by not belonging, to being able to stand in your own self, to be knowing that anywhere you go and any place you have to do something by standing in yourself, your true self, your true message, you will always belong because you will always be you. But she still says that even though we're going to stand in our truth and we're going to be strong about it, it doesn't mean that we can't have connections and spiritual connections with other people. But that connection with other people comes about because we have the freedom now to express ourselves. We have that spirit to say we're different, but we're connected together. And so that's where she's continuing on in her book talking about this. She said that she wanted to focus on some questions about the process of how people have true belonging and what does it take so that we belong nowhere and everywhere because we are in ourselves. And she says, quote, belonging in our heart and not the rewards for perfecting, pleasing, proving, pretending, or something that others can hold hostage or take away meaning your true belonging is going to be coming from yourself. And I believe from your sense of love from God. It is what creates us and makes us stand there. But if we're willing to stand, she says, in that wilderness, on our integrity, the question, is that going to give us a sense of community? And now that we're so much into fighting each other, and how do we get that belonging when we're all just at each other's throats so often? But she gives some pieces of advice. People are hard to hate when they're close up. Leave that's absolutely true. Once you get to know people, once you get to talk to people, you see where they're at and you learn not to hate anybody. We can hate other people because we don't understand and we don't ask questions. I remember listening to a pastor say once that if there's someone who makes you angry, it's because you haven't talked to them enough and you haven't asked them enough questions. Then she said that we should be able to speak truth to BS, but we should be civil. She says we should hold hands with strangers. And this was interesting, strong backs, soft fronts, and wild hearts. That's a direct quote. So when she's looking at these images and she's trying to figure out how do you stand firm while at the same time expressing love and connection and community how can we do those two things at the same time? And she said that this metaphor of wilderness is about solitude. It's about being vulnerable because nature obviously can be a little bit dangerous, but it's also so beautiful. So that when we fully belong to ourselves and we're willing to stand in that wilderness in an, like an unpredictable, wild place that's full of danger, but also beauty, that's when we can feel ourselves. 
because we can't control it. But when we learn how to control our feelings in that wilderness, that dangerous wilderness, then that's when we're going to figure out who we are at our bravest, most sacred place. She says, quote, but it turns out to be in the place of true belonging, and it's the most bravest, most sacred place you'll ever stand. Because in that wild wilderness that you can't control, that's when we're actually going to break down who we are and we're going to stand in what we actually are because it is going to teach us who we are. Part of what I really liked about um, Girl Scouts when I was a kid is we would go out into the wilderness and do very hard things, survival camps and all sorts of things. And when you do that, when you do a survival camp and you get that idea that you could live alone in the wilderness... I don't want to get too deep about it, but it teaches you about you and your strength. It's it's one thing to know about nature and you can eat this berry and not that berry and this is how you find water and this is how you get fish. But it also teaches you that you can survive in the wilderness and this metaphorical wilderness that once we can survive, not just in our cozy house with our cozy furniture and everything that we've set up for our lives and all the people we put in our lives. When we can stand there being brave in our proverbial wilderness, it's going to break down everything that we have. She says, abandoning our ideological bunkers and living from our wild hearts instead of our weary hearts. When we learn how to do that, we become empowered, just like I felt empowered as a 12-year-old, knowing I could survive in the wilderness. It taught me a lot, and her concept of wilderness in a proverbial sense is just as valuable in teaching us who we can be and how we can be. She says that true belonging is something that we're going to have to act on. We're going to have to fight for. It's not because we're going to fit in with other people, but it's because we're going to be vulnerable with other people. A lot of her other books are about vulnerability. We're going to get uncomfortable, but we're going to learn how to, she says, be present with other people without, quote, sacrificing who we are. Boy, that's really such a great lesson. And I thought that was interesting because when I talked last time about that video I was watching, watching this woman who read the book and the impact it had on her, in her mind, this book was telling her relatives, no, I don't want to be with you in an uncomfortable place. I'm going to just sit at home and sleep in and read a book. I think what she's actually saying in this book is, no, you be able to go do that uncomfortable thing knowing who you are, still being who you are without sacrificing who you are but being comfortable everywhere because you know now you can stand in uncomfortable places with people you don't agree with and still be you. But she says we don't go into the wilderness unprepared for our metaphorical wilderness and that we have to be prepared because, again, the wilderness is dangerous. So the first step is we have to learn how to trust ourselves, but also trust other people. This is where I think this is good. I think this book could have gone off target by her making this into some sort of strength manifesto. I don't need anyone. I don't need any person. I don't need to go visit my aunt who wants me to go to church. I don't have to do any of those things because I'm a strong person. She's not saying that. She's saying that we can now, because we have learned to brave the wilderness, become vulnerable to other people's actions, to other people's situations, and Now we trust ourselves enough. We have dug in enough so that we understand who we are and how to stand strong with whatever it is we encounter. I think she got there through feeling detached from people as a kid. And I think that I got there through that same combination of not having parents taking care of me, of not having friends that were close to me when I was very young, of sort of, like I said, raising myself thinking that I could go move into the woods and live by myself. But once I had that experience of actually living in the woods by myself through a Girl Scout troop, it empowered me to know I can take care of myself in any situation I encounter. And when you learn that as a 12-year-old, it gives you such a valuable gift. And I think that's what she's missing. That's why she spent all this time trying to find this, because she couldn't understand the quote. She couldn't understand how to belong nowhere and everywhere. And that's how you do it. So she gives an acronym for her word brave. She says, first, there's boundaries. You're willing to say no. Maybe that's where the person was getting the part where she's not going to go to church because she's going to say no. And she's going to be clear about her boundaries. 
Reliability. That means she's going to do what she says she's going to do. She's going to be aware of the things she's good at, the things that she's not good at. She's not going to overcommit to things, but she is going to commit to people on those things. A is accountability. And that means if you make a mistake, you screw up, you said the wrong thing, you're going to apologize and you're going to make amends. B is for vault. I thought that was funny. You don't share information that's not yours to share. That means gossiping. You know, we always have so much gossiping. And it's funny too, because it always strikes me that we have excuses for gossiping. Oh, I'm just sharing it with you so that you understand where that person is coming from. No, you're really gossiping. We love to gossip. We have to know that when people tell us something private, we keep it private. People knew at my job that if they told me something that was in confidence, I kept it. I absolutely kept it. If I had objections to what I heard, I would make those clear, but I didn't go around telling other people to try to, you know, win a side or something like that. I is integrity, meaning, I love this, courage over comfort. I oftentimes pick comfort more than anything else. I love sitting in my little rooms and not going outside and not doing the thing, get my butt off the seat. I'm always happy I did. N stands for non judgment. She said that we can talk. And I don't have to judge you. I see that in politics all the time. You're going to say a thing and I'm going to disagree with it and I'm immediately going to judge you. What if you just accept it for what it is? Huh, I don't believe that way, but you know, that's okay. We can disagree on this. It's absolutely okay for us to disagree on this. Why is that such a hard thing? But we can talk about our feelings and we can not be judgmental on other people. The G is generosity, which means we're going to do the best possible generous interpretations of other people's words, their actions, their intentions. This is another great uh, thing. I love this too, because so many times we, we pretend we're mind readers. Oh, well, that person did this. That means they're a this. Are we reading their minds? Do we really know that's what they meant? Is that what we really think, that we know everybody's intentions? I mean, sure, we can see their actions and we can disagree with them, but do we know why? Do we know their intentions? Can we sit there and tell with every ounce of truth that we understand their exact psychology? No, we can't. So that's braving. And she wants us to hold ourselves accountable and ask the question, did I respect my boundaries? Was I reliable? And you can see how that goes. She gives this quote and Joseph Campbell, despite the fact that you can agree and disagree with him. He gives a really thoughtful things. And the quote says, if you can see your path laid out in front of you step by step, you know it's not your path. Your own path you make with every step you take. That's why it's your path. So I think that is so amazing because a lot of times we see a way to go. I mean, even in the, you know, I'm thinking about this podcast and I'm thinking what I want to do in the future, you know, what I want to do with my website. And I look around what other people are doing and I, don't like some of the, I don't know, the way that other people's websites work or how they always try to funnel you in. And I thought, you know, I don't have to do things like other people are doing things. That's their path. I don't have to do everything that you're supposed to do when you have a podcast or everything that you're supposed to do when you have a blog. I can make my own way. And I think that's just a short analogy. But in life in general, you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. When my company changed quite a bit. Most people went to this other company that was in town. People are still there. They've obviously liked their careers. I picked something entirely different. I decided I wanted to stay in the industry I was in and just do it with other people. It was another choice, but you have to find the choice that works for you and not step in other people's footprints. She goes quite a bit in towards the end about politics. And I'm not going to really, I don't want to ever talk about politics, but she brings up a book called Deer Hunting with Jesus, which was written by a guy named Joe Badgiant. I don't know if that's how he says his name, but basically he went and hung out with people he does not understand as a college professor, people he has never met because he wanted to know something that other college professors would never learn in their universities, meet people that they would never encounter. And I thought that was really nice, you know, to reach out and be different and see different people. Because, you know, even in my course of travel throughout the United States, I would hear it all the time. 
the East Coast people would hate the West Coast people and the West Coast would hate the South and then South would hate the North and the Midwest. Well, we're just a friendly bunch of people who just love everyone. Eh, maybe not. But you understand that, you know, you can get these ideas and images in our head. And all I ever heard about in all my travels to all these different places in the United States was how much one group of people didn't like the other group of people in the United States in different locations. And early on when I started traveling for work, I just, I went someplace I didn't like. I'm not a city person. So I went to Detroit. I just don't like cities. I don't feel in my own skin there. I don't feel comfortable there. And so this might be that sign that I didn't have true belonging. And I realized, you know what? Everybody is from someplace and they love being in that place someplace. Why not, instead of just sitting there and criticizing or not liking it, why don't you spend these opportunities of travel and try to find out why a person lives there? What do they love about living there? What do they eat? What do they do? What's exciting about living in every place? And throughout my time, I've been, I think, at 52 different locations in my career in this last job. And I got to see every place from Hawaii to New York City to all parts of California, lots of places in the South. Never went to Canada. I kind of wanted to go to Canada, but I saw lots of places and I did that every time. I ate local foods. I talked to local people and I tried to understand what it is they do. And it was so amazing to be able to do that, to see what people loved. When I was in Detroit, the Airbnb we were staying at was this guy who bought up all these broken down homes and he fixed them up and turned them into Airbnbs beautiful, redid the woodwork because these were all like almost historic houses, but they were just destroyed, you know, from urban decay. He restored them all. And then he put these beautiful sound systems in each of these houses. And then there was a wall of Motown CDs there. And you could just sit there and immerse yourself. So I talked to him for a little bit and he was showing me some of his favorite CDs for Motown and the history of Motown. And I just listened to him talk about his love for Detroit. I think that's what she's saying is now that you can stand on your own and you know who you are and you're ready to be yourself. Now you can reach out to other people and find out what makes them tick. And that's what's going to get us away from insecurity. It's going to get us away from loneliness. It's going to build those connections with other people. And it's going to allow us to reach out to other people too, who also might be feeling lonely. We can mend our hurts. She says then we can become the wilderness. We are comfortable in our lone spot. And now we can reach out to other people and help them heal too. She says that we will pay for hate in our lives. And that is too big of a price for pay. So we have to commit to become closer to people. And whether we agree or disagree, we're going to do it in kindness, always in kindness. And that's why she said that she likes this term of conflict transformation. It's not resolution. We're not agreeing here, but we're transforming our conflict into something much more expansive. If we don't understand something the person across from us said, or we greatly disagree with it, tell me more, she says. Ask the question, could you, could you do tell me a little bit more about that? Could you help me understand what it is you're trying to say or how you came to this idea? And then she said, the point is to really listen. We're not agreeing. We're not disagreeing. We're not being combative. But instead, we're listening. And because we now feel safe, we feel the ability to not pick a side, to not other the person to not put them into a bucket, not to give this false dilemma of me versus you, I love that, and not turn this all into some emotional, weaponized feeling against other people. Now that we are brave, now that we're set in ourselves, we can go out and reach other people and still feel safe. She says, quote, for most of us, even with the with us or against us mandate, Sounds a little like oversimplified BS. It still feels easier to pick a side. The argument is always set up in a way that there can only be one option. But she says that getting curious and asking questions 
gets us out of our bunkers. I love to get out of bunkers. I want to hear people and I want to understand them. And I'm not going to other other people. And I agree with her completely. She talks about civility and she says, quote, from Cassandra Donkey and Thomas Faith, civility is claiming and caring for one's identity, needs, and beliefs without degrading. I like that. She says in the end, we should hold hands with strangers. She says it's counterintuitive, but when we can connect with other people, put our braving, her acronym, into action, then we'll be able to make those true connections with people who are even strangers. And another message that I really appreciate it is that through all of this, we're going to bring in kindness. In the end, I like I said, I never read a book by Brene Brown. I've seen her in various other TV shows and podcasts, but I really appreciated this book and I appreciated how she didn't just leave all of this in standing by ourselves, but instead brought us back to community and caring and listening to others and bridging those gaps that we could really use some bridging right now. So my challenge to you is think of someone that you're having a particularly difficult time understanding. Can you take this idea of standing in yourself, your true self, your true being, but learn to ask the question, tell me more. Can you just for one conversation, one cup of coffee, one lunch at someone's house, talk to someone and do it in small steps because sometimes it can get aggravating. Tell me more about why you feel this way. And realize that because you're strong and you know who you are, it's fine. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. The brand new podcast, Buzz, Blossom, and Squeak is out. Together, we can learn how to appreciate nature, get outside more, and just experience the fullness of life. No matter where you live and no matter what your surroundings are. And remember... Our step to connecting to other people in the wilderness starts with small steps.